Uh, second booking, cool. Um, so a little bit about us. Uh, we're an open source software consultancy. I think uh, most people in the room will have, uh, will have heard of us. Uh, we're what I like to call an end-to-end -end IT consultancy specialising in, oh, I should introduce us with names, actually, shouldn't I? Sorry, I'm Jamie Novick, and I'm here from CompuCourt. This is Gwen Han Chen. Um, he's our uh, product owner and one of the developers as well. Um, so, as I was saying, we're end-to-end -end IT consultancy, so we do everything from, you know, understanding, collecting requirements, bit of consultancy around city CRM, uh, implementation, development, support, hosting, etc. Our mission is to raise the awareness and advantages of selecting open source software, so it's great to see some new faces in the room as well. Uh, and we've been working with a diverse array of organisations, some non-profit uh, trade associations, uh, also some government NHS police clients and a few in the education corporate sector as well. Um, oh yeah, our role in the community, so we're supporting partners. Um, we're the development partner for the City HR project going forwards, uh, helping to organise today uh, and yesterday. Uh, and we're looking after the gift aid extension. So if you have any questions about gift aid and stuff like that, then do come to us. Um, so cool. I'm going to pass over oh, to you, Guadalajan, already. So great. <laughs> Let me take a deep breath. Take it over. Cool. And be nice. It's Guadalajan's first presentation today. Yes. So. <laughs> so I've already asked the uh, question Jimmy already asked. So uh, how many of you have been using CV Booking? Has anybody actually downloaded CV Booking and started using it? So one, two, three, in a test environment. Oh, okay. And you're, you're kind of looking to roll it out. And I guess another question, which is how many people are looking at it from a, uh, a conference venue kind of spaces and we've, we've got rooms to hire out? Community centre type thing. Okay, and, and hiring them out for a fee is that right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. No, that's not for a fee, but rooms. Yeah. But rooms to, to hire out basically. Mm. Physical. Is there anybody else who's got anything else like a little bit weirder that they're trying to tennis hire? For a tennis club. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So, so we just keep it in mind as oh, we well. kind of go through. Well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I've already read through all these bullet points to like get you or. Uh, a general idea about what does uh, CV Booking do, and we will quickly jump to demo session. <laughs> yeah, high risk. High yeah. risk <laughs> so in a nutshell, we want a system where multiple configurable uh, resources can be reserved, paid for, and then used by CV contacts. So basically, this is the uh, back end. Well, say if you're working for this company and renting out the resources to other people, so it's like basically a system for you, not for the other users who come actually like book for resource. So uh, for more information, you can find out in the wiki, like details, probably some business, business logics, something else as well. So currently we are on version one. Uh, so the features are like limited and unlimited resources. So um, limited resources stand for rooms, uh, people, I think it's the next, yeah. So limited resources, unlimited resources. So um, you've got rooms, projects, vehicles, people, and unlimited resources stand for tea, coffee, anything else. I mean, you can provide like unlimitedly to people. So all these uh, resources can be configured and the fees, uh, like some other charges basically you can charge them like uh, however you want and uh, multiple resources can be booked price automatically calculated so when you uh, proceed to booking uh, booking wizard so add the uh, resource and uh, discount uh, some other charges like additional charges and the price will uh, automatically calculate it so You've got ability to record status and payments, so you can create um, your like customized uh, um, booking status, like booked, uh, pending, uh, scheduled, whatever. And I think we have a specific one which is provisional, so people can kind of make provisional bookings, and the provisional bookings then show up as a different color on the uh, on the calendar screen. So you can kind of see, okay, well, this is a provisional one. Maybe somebody hasn't actually confirmed it. So therefore, you know, you can phone these people back up and say, well, actually, I know that you've provisionally booked it, but somebody else wants that time. So you can go back to people and see the difference with it. Oh, and you can change the colors of all of that as well. <laughs> Which is very nice. Key, key, uh, <laughs> key feature. <laughs> so yeah, so during the booking process, 
everything you've been doing will be recorded to contact activity i guess like um, mailing uh make a uh, made a booking or whatever you'll be recording cv contact activity tab so can i just explain a little bit more about sort of limited and unlimited resources mm -hmm. just to make it kind of clear so in, in a lot of this was built with kind of flexibility in mind because we had a particular client with a particular use case but the idea was to try and make something as flexible as we could do within that kind of um within that kind of boundary. Um, and so what we thought was that you, you generally have, you know, to begin with, uh, limit, uh, two types of resource. You have resources which are kind of limited, so that could be, like say, the tennis courts, where once you book them, they're kind of used up. And then we have this concept of kind of unlimited resources, which is kind of stuff that, you know, you can keep booking more and more of. Um, so with the, the examples there being kind of lunch, tea, coffee, you know, so they're not necessarily really resources, but you could swap that to be something else which you have kind of an unlimited amount of, or you're not kind of limiting people to. Um, so that's kind of like to get your head around like limited and unlimited resources. It's just kind of to facilitate, okay, well, when somebody makes a booking, they might book a room, but then they also say, I don't know, they book tennis ball sets, as, sorry, a tennis court, but they might also book tennis ball sets, and you want to charge for that if they're going to do so, but they're relatively unlimited, so you can just put them through. Yeah. But when, after you see the UI, it might be easier for you to understand. So limited resources are actually the resources which will go on the scheduler. Yeah. yeah. So we we'll explain this, so we'll jump to another one. So uh, resources have configurable properties. So uh, for example, you've got a room and uh, you want to rent the room out to people like for um, weekly uh, charge or like a monthly or yearly whatever you can configure a set of config configurable charge so like a, um, when different people come in you can choose different price uh, basically for different people I'll, and I'll add a little bit more which is again about the flexibility of the pricing um, so again we were trying to cover off lots of use cases to say right how can we make it so that you know any kind of pricing we can put in there so the, the most configurable option would be for you guys to be able to just type in the number and the price that you want to put in. Uh, so stopping short of just doing that, which obviously if you release out to you know, all your users in the organization could end up in a little bit of a mess. Um, what we did instead was we have these kind of, they're not quite, uh, anybody who's familiar with price sets in Civi, they don't work quite in the same way as price sets in Civi. Uh, but what we have is a configuration set. So what you kind of say is that, well, this resource um, it's kind of charged maybe by hours or by half day or by number of people or whatever it may be. So you can select a unit and then you kind of say, right, uh, the, with the charge for this unit is X. So you might say, okay, for a half day for this room, we charge £100, but for a full day, we charge £150. So that you're able to then have a configuration set that says, uh, you know, fifty pounds for the let me get this right. Uh, one hundred and fifty pounds for the full day and one hundred pounds for the half day, and then people can flip between those two options, and then you're able to multiply that by a quantity. So you're able to kind of say, well, actually, what I've got here is that they're booking for three full days, therefore it's three times one full day price, if that kind of makes sense. So ideally, you've got quite a lot of flexibility to kind of put in. Well, actually, in certain configurations um, of this kind of resource. You know, we charge it by day, sometimes we charge it by people, for, for instance, or something else. So you guys can really put all of that stuff into the configuration set in order to kind of make up your pricing however you want to. Um, it's very flexible. It does also mean that we don't base the pricing on the amount of time that the resource is booked for. So there's no kind of calculation there that says, hang on a second, uh, we've booked it for four days and therefore automatically I've kind of worked it out because you guys might choose a unit which isn't based on time. Can you have uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't do that at the moment. No. Cool. So yeah, that's basically about the pricing stuff. Yeah. So people can book multiple resources at once, of course. <laughs> Rooms, event, tea, coffee, food, drink. This is when we talk about the price. I guess this is, and the reason for kind of saying that is that uh, although you can set up, like, say, city event to, you know, to have kind of like a shopping cart kind of format, um, mm -hmm. like with uh, civi booking there was this kind of specific element that people do kind of book multiple things all at the same time um, as opposed to there are some booking circumstances where for example somebody's uh, think the good example is maybe like a, 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 um, a service provider or a health service provider or something like that where people book a slot 
Um, and actually, Civi doesn't Civi booking doesn't really work in that way. The idea is that people book multiple resources at once rather than booking themselves into one slot, which is more kind of the way that Civi event kind of considers you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is about like uh, the status of booking. So once booked, we'll create activity for uh, contact of type booking. So this is like uh, the uh, record it will create during the uh, process of making a booking. So this will be Oracle as a, in the um, uh, activity tab, as I said before. So um, contact we will have a tab for bookings. So right, so there will be separate uh, record in booking tab as well. Yeah, one weird, weird, uh, some slightly uh, strange thing about Civi, but uh, maybe people don't quite realize this, which is that the activity tab, um, the activities in the activity tab, although you'll see kind of contributions and uh, membership purchase kind of like in that activity tab, it's, it's kind of actually a separate record uh, than the things that are going on in the other tabs. So they're linked, but it's kind of actually a separate record. So you can actually see within the activity tab for your contacts in Civi, a lot more information than necessarily in terms of the history than you can see kind of on the directly on, say, the contributions tab or in the membership tab. So um, one of the things with Civi booking was to kind of make it as from history of clients and all of that kind of stuff is to make it as audible, auditable as possible. So it does fire out, makes an activity for when it sends out an email, when you provisionally book something, when you update it to a real booking, et cetera, et cetera. So ideally it's kind of all in there. So there's no excuses for, you know, kind of people saying, well, hang on a second, I booked this. No, I didn't book this. Cool. Status and payment. So you can create a uh, customized status, like um, whatever you want, like a uh, provisional, confirm, cancel, complete, or I don't know what happened. Exa etc. So mm, y you can record payments for sure. Like uh, uh, the payment will go through the contribution system in CV. So er everything will be on the book. Cool. So this is the provisionally uh, booking that you mentioned yeah. before. Uh, so we'll kind of cover everything yeah. <laughs> before this. <laughs> so the other thing is you can update booking uh, to be booked so once you make a booking you choose a status for that so after the guy come back and pay uh, for the resource to you like in cash uh, check or whatever and you can manually update the status of the booking and of course you can cancel the booking as well but and you can add a cancellation chart for that so just in case like the guy uh, cancel the booking the day before the thing really happened. And there's a little uh, piece there in terms of configuration, which is that our clients kind of the way that they charge for cancellations was uh, as kind of like a percentage of the total fee. So you can kind of put in those percentages and say, you know, three days is this. Again, it doesn't calculate it for you, but it's kind of like a drop down option that you can select from. And then if you want to add any additional charges manually, then you can do that as well. So, you know, you can have, you, if you want to work the way of the system, you can put in a percentage. Uh, if you don't work in that way already, you can kind of type in a number, which is like the cancellation charge. Cool. So here's a chart of like the flow of making a booking in this system. So you will uh, create a new booking and add limited resource with um, availability lookup and associated options. Add unlimited resources, add contact, booking details, save as provisional, and send confirmation email, and record payments as well, I think. Yeah, not that. Yeah. So um, you can edit booking status, um, cancel charge calculated, option to record payment, send confirmation email again. So this is editing booking status, confirm option to record payments and confirmation email again, uh, edit booking and update additional charges, record payment. So here comes configuration. So before you, uh, before you allow people to come in to book any, uh, to make any bookings, you need to add resource and configuration price set, like how you want to charge people, additional charges for any excuse you want to charge people more and cancellation charge just in case you lost any like profit uh, because yeah. people cancel 
the bookings. And you can choose slot colours. Can you limit how far in the future you the resources available? So it will be available up until December? Um, so I, I guess the, the first point is that, so all of this is, is admin interface only at the moment, so it's kind of phone up booking. So that's the, the first point. And so there aren't that many controls okay. around the system in order to kind of stop stuff. Now, when we move to the next phase, which yeah. will be looking at kind of the online booking side of it, there will be this point around, okay, I'm making a slot of time available to go up onto the website so that people can book that particular slot that's kind of reserved for the website, basically. So that will be kind of like when we start to look at kind of the, con the controls and things. Do you want to do the walkthrough at this point then? And then we'll come back to the configuration. Sorry? If you want to do the walk like an online the demo and then come yeah, back yeah, to the configuration. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't done any configuration yet, so we'll probably do it. I'll do the configuration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, yeah. So, let's no, do, no, we'll do the robot. demo. Oh, no, this will. So this is actually the booking interface. When you come to your CV, so because uh, uh, she was zoomed in, you haven't got enough space yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. So here is a booking I menu item. So uh, if you want to make a new booking for people, here is where you want to go. So I want to book make a booking for you, but I don't have any resource yet. So. You will need to click here to create a new resource. Can I get any example? Like what kind of resource you want uh, to run? You need to do the configuration set first. Yeah, yeah. Put it in. yeah. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah, so one of the things a bit is tricky. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit. So one of the things is that um, you need, uh, if you think about when you're kind of planning how you're going to put your uh, resources into the system, you want to kind of start off first with thinking about your pricing. So the, the first thing you might kind of say is, okay, well, um, we charge for something by half day or by day, something along, along those lines. So in which case, the first thing that you want to do is kind of set up these configuration sets for the pricing. So if we go through to the oh, configuration so here, so yeah, so, so be booking. in the administer yeah. menu. Right. So here are actually the steps you, you need to walk through by uh, <coughs> setting up the resources for people. Mm. Do we have any units in that? We do. Uh, we have some. I yeah. Think. Okay, cool. yeah. So let's start with adding a resource configuration set. So if we just take rooms and keep it simple for the time being, and we might say, so let's just say these are, you know, room charges or something along those lines. Room fees. Yeah, room fees. That's fine. Cool. And here now you're going to put in. Uh, so the label might be half day, something along those lines. We'll take the example that I had before, half day, uh, and then like the price might be say a hundred pound for the half day. Mm -hmm. uh, maximum size, uh, we don't actually do too much with that at the moment, so we can just put something in there. Um, so for come back like to this it. room, forty people. Or something yeah, like something that. like that. Uh, and the unit is uh, oh yeah. So we create some new unit. We might need a unit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think this can just go for people because I think this is linked to the max size or no no we no. need to put in like you should put in day yeah and this is just a uh, an option list that people can edit okay so just put day as the value well. so what's I think the two units you're, you're renting the the resource is, is that, that, where that where that is? Yeah, so you're kind of saying, so I guess maybe, um, we'll see when it comes through, I have to remind myself, but I think it's that you do uh, half, like half day, and that's the number of days. Uh, so I think... Should be time. Oh yeah, maybe the label should be half or something like that. Or, yeah, or should time. time. Yeah, okay, we can call it time, yeah. Okay. We're fine. So I guess when you've got people in that drop down, it's like where you book time with a person. Um, no, people would be, say, you're charging for a room on the basis of the number of people right. who are going. So, number for, of seats or something. so I think for, for the unlimited resources, for example, you probably charge <coughs> for the food based on the based number on of the people place, yeah. or something like that. So, okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So it should be, I just put time in, half day. 
no, no, just put time. Time, time. Let's just put time. It's fine. Mm. I think that would quick. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Okay. So now we've got yeah. Now we've got configuration set, so we can set up the resources now. Yeah. Is everybody following that? Sorry, that's a little bit, a little bit choppy. So, let's say we've got this uh, seminar room two. Yeah. Ah, I've done that bit. Sorry. <laughs> Can I ask about that next bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a kind of way of, of, of either changing the word location two or upgrading the database or adding alternate locations. Is there a you that I think it is CVB, isn't it? Uh, I, th I think it's probably in one of the option lists. Um, so if you go, yeah, so if you go to option groups, so is, is it customized data and screens or system settings? I think it'll be under. System settings. Yeah, system settings. System settings. Yeah. And then option groups. What I would say is that there was some metadata that we, you know, when kind of we didn't get, when we got to the end of the project, we didn't have kind of time to pull through. Yeah. So there's kind of like, there's some stuff like that, which uh, we have the fields and we're storing it. So uh, here's a list. So there's, there's location one and location two, but then location two is in the drop down. Uh, okay. Oh, I think it's it. a, no, no, I think it's a the value thing, maybe. Okay, well, we'll take a look at it. It's not, mm. not something that's kind of been reported back to us before. It's, it, it's not a big deal, but the, the use case I was thinking of is, you know, you, we might have a limited resource, say we have some table on the top floor, some table on the bottom floor, yeah. and they can't move between them, whereas actually okay. the chairs can. So here well. you've got location one and two, because they were using same value previously, so. Sorry, say that again. They were use, using same value oh, previously, so, so yeah. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. Okay, that's alright. Thank you. That's right. So, ah, yeah. got fixed. Yeah. Forgot. Yes. Yeah, Let's do it again. Yes. Yeah, room, seminar room one. Two, two, and what I would say about the resource type um, is actually quite useful because that um, sort of groups the resources on the calendar. So if you have different resource types, so like rooms, but you might also have projectors, which are generally a limited resource, or say cameras or whatever it may be. So you kind of want to group them by the resource type on the calendar, Projector. and then you can collapse and grow them up. So if that gets bigger and bigger, then at least you can kind of collapse to get them around. Um, a later version will kind of do some more work on kind of the calendar for like filtering, sorting, based on the metadata that we're kind of putting in there, but we didn't have time to get to that. Uh, we won't need to add another resource configuration set. Let's start with the rooms. Yeah, fine. Maybe an add another. Yeah, one for the time being. May. Oh, yeah. I think just use this one. Right? Yeah. But we need to do it for the unlimited. Yeah, let's do the unlimited. Let's do this one first. Shall we go through the... Well, you setup? can't with it. Let's do it with the unlimited. Yeah. So do another configuration set and just do it for food. So now we'll go through and kind of set up. So we set up the uh, limited resources and now setting up the unlimited resources. So you need to set up a configuration set for unlimited resources. So the pricing that you're going to do for food and drink, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So if you just say uh, like vegetarian lunch, something like that. Lunch. So that might be you know, the first five pounds per head. Yeah. Forty. Yeah. Whatever. It's fine. Per, per head. Per yeah. head. Yeah. And then 
non vegetarian. Non vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite. Ten. So the other thing is you can mix and match the uh, like the units within a configuration set. So it might be that you know sometimes for this resource we book it by people, and other times we book it by time, and other times we book it by whatever it may be. So you can kind of mix and match that to make kind of the different pricing that you want to use. And the key bit here is that for an unlimited resource, you tick the box there that says this is an unlimited resource. That moves it over to the other one. The idea for that was that um, people might make a mistake, and you wouldn't want to go through a whole wizard, you know, of having created a, you know, put a price there, blah 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 blah, to create an unlimited resource, and then go, oh no, this was a limited one. So it's just a tick box that you can flip between the two. Okay, I think we are all set. Any more questions? Any other questions on that? Before okay, we so go to, to <laughs> the booking, cool. Yeah. So, so let's make a new booking. So, so you can just show them collapsing and going up and down on the left hand side if you click on that bit there. Yeah. So that like you can kind of get between if it gets bigger, you can kind of flip between. It, so that's why it's important to do the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you make a new booking, it's like it's a schedule that you can like um, drag and like uh, make uh, slots. So it's quite flexible, and you can change the color in the setting as well. So let's make a booking from, say, 9 to 1 o'clock. This is half day. What's that? Price? Where's the price? Oh, no, come on. Close it down again? Which one is this? Ah, oh, this is 4 for 7. Oh. Ah. You might have a problem. Should we do the... Uh, should we do the online one? Yeah. If it's uh, so we haven't tested this uh, on 447, so I just get this set up yesterday. Um, I think it should be fine, I think so. See SB booking. Okay. SB booking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. You'll need to send it. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one that we prepared earlier. I think we've got some settings here already. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Um, so basically, this extension will work stable in uh, on any 4.4 version before 4.47 because we haven't tested that one. That's kind of like the latest ver version on 4.4, isn't it? Yeah. So. Let's make a booking here. That's probably a job for the spring. And we'll probably implement the uh, compatibility for 4.5 version as well, yeah. if possible. I notice you can do that down to like the five minute block. Mm. Um, can you change the, the, the granularity of that? Can you change kind of. Can you not just type in the number? Yeah, you can type in the number, but I'm yeah. saying when you, when you kind of drag and drop, is it kind of... No, sorry, yeah, I think that's kind of built in, yeah. five minutes is, is, is set somewhere, but, you know, it to... It, I'm sure that, you know, in, in, in the code you could change it, but there isn't a configuration no, no, option no, at the moment, yeah. Uh, the other thing that at the moment we, we were trying to implement so that you could change the start and end date of the uh, times of the day for the calendar as well. At the moment, that's fixed. Um, we ran into kind of like a quite a complicated issue around kind of making it so that you could change this, because it does some calculations around, uh, you know, how much time I think things are stretched by, and it ended up being quite a complicated calculation. So um, we haven't done that for the time being.
So it's kind of fixed to being uh, eight or 10, but again, it's something that you can probably change in the code. Should I make a, a configuration set for half day, uh, whole day, or this all makes sense? Uh, if I book the uh, room for people? Yeah, that's fine. Just okay. yeah. So if we say that so this resource uh, was for 40 people, you put the charge in. Yeah. You can see it calculates the price and books that in. And you can move the time as well. If you go down, you can see you have like this little basket at the bottom there. And this will, will all get updated. For example, you move to 9 o'clock. And a later version will have a floating basket, but we couldn't quite <laughs> get it to kind of do that. Okay. So let's proceed. So this is the interface kind of you can add unlimited resources and the discount, additional charge. Blah, blah. So to explain, we, we, there's a difference between uh, additional, sorry, unlimited resources and additional char uh, additional charges. I think the idea here was that you might go through the whole booking process, um, book people unlimited resources in kind of advance. On the day, somebody might then phone up and say, "Oh, hang on a second, we needed stationery, or we needed, uh, you know, some pens or a flip chart, or whatever it is." There might be some additional charges that you want to come back in and add. So those are kind of like separate additional charges or ad hoc charges that you might come back to afterwards. So the client um, that we built this for, their, their reasoning was that they, they actually invoice or bill people after the event as opposed to in advance of it. So it is kind of flexible in that sense, which is that the, the booking can all be completed and then you could go back and add uh, an, un, uh, additional charges and then you could record payment after that. And Civi will, the, you'll see the booking screen will actually tell you whether or not um, the payment's been made. So you can kind of search for the bookings based on the ones that aren't paid for, I believe. So yeah, you can see that. Can you make bookings recurring so that we can book the same thing every week? That we, not at the moment. Um, the, uh, they've just implemented, or will be implementing through 4.6, some core um, recurring functionality, so like there's an extension that other extensions can use in order to build on that, and so we'll be taking a look at that and seeing how we kind of use that to make kind of these recurring bookings. Sorry, I have a very slightly different, mm. slightly different question. Because mm. I know I, I know that there's going to be problems around making stuff like that recurring because of the accounting element of it. Um, what would make the big difference to us was if would be if you got say to your basket at the bottom and then there was a button that said I want to duplicate this with a different. Okay. So, so you could have a booking that you've made on a Saturday afternoon yeah. and a button which says, just duplicate this and then I'll just switch the date to next Saturday and I'll make another one and then you can stack up five in a row really quickly mm. rather than make, rather than having to start again. Would they pay for them all at the same time? That would be the notion, yeah. So they would but pay for five sets of this just so, so that you don't have to click on the thing. I want to make this many bookings and that's what you invoice for. Okay. So obviously you don't want to make bookings into infinity and yeah, okay. It probably needs a little bit more discussion about kind of working out like the user stories and exactly how, you know, how the yeah. different sort of uh, flows could work. Um, because there's, recurring is, is, a, is, is quite a difficult thing. Um, yeah. I, I'm not 100% certain um, how the, the new recurring functionality deals with the concept of forever. Yeah. Uh, and actually for booking, like you say, in terms of billing, that, that's a real problem because, you know, how do you, uh, if somebody books something forever, how do you deal with that? Um, there's, there's also the this concept of the, you know, when people pay for some of stuff and when they're going to pay for the next block of stuff and having multiple payments against, you know, kind of one booking that is the thing. So we haven't really attacked that at the moment, and sure. it's kind of you know something that needs a, a quite a lot of thoughts around. So, but it'd be worth having a, a conversation about. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's proceed. So if you want to add unlimited, yeah. Is this? Oh, is that this as well? Sorry. Okay, where's the, it's not oh, doing the calculation it. again. It is doing, I think. It's not because you'd have the numbers underneath, I think. Oh, right. Yeah. I think it's like uh, the, the um, browser, probably. I don't know. All right, we'll come, come yeah, back to that. Because, uh, just that no, if like, uh, you change the resolution, it should be fine. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't want to play with it now.
Cool, so you can select a contact as you'd expect. Um, so we have primary and secondary contacts. So this works a little bit like um, soft crediting does in, uh, in con contributions. So um, the idea here being that you might have somebody who books on behalf of an organization. And so you might want to kind of say, OK, well, this person's booked it, so I know who the primary contact is. Um, but the secondary contact might be the organization, because on the organization contact record, you also want to see those bookings from the organization. But we don't lock it down, so it's kind of flexible for people to kind of put whatever they want in. So you might do it provisional, uh, purchase order number, just the client kind of have this requirement that you want to record that, uh, the title, so it might be uh, Civicon. Some descriptions, some notes. So I think the description goes out on the email receipt whereas notes are for internal purposes so that you guys can kind of record anything against the booking. You know, don't call this person back if she calls again. Yeah. So uh, estimated number of participants. So uh, at a later point, we want to look at kind of doing some reporting around it as well so that you can kind of see, you know, how much utilisation people are getting out of the resources, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. Cool. Do you want to send an email? Um, so name and address, so that's the from name, uh, and then you have the option to either send it to primary contact, secondary contact, or both. Um, and then I think at this point we would not pay for the booking because it's just a provisional booking, so you can kind of put that in and then we'll come back to the, the wizard later and you can see how you do that. So if you put that in. Cool. How are we doing for time? Yeah, so that's just Civi telling us that you can't do a mailer at the moment, so that's fine. And you've got all the logging. So we didn't configure the... Um, no, 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 leave it, just go down, it's fine. So we go to the... Um, no, just go to the contact. Who did you book it for? Ah, oh, here you go. Which contact? So, yeah, I'm just going to So if you go to that contact record. So what you'll see now on the contact record is that Civi's got um, a bookings tab. So on the left-hand side here. Cool, so you can see the, the booking then for that person. Uh, and if you go to the activities tab as well, any minute now, you'll see that the booking has been made here. Um, and also the email has been recorded. Maybe it hasn't been recorded. Maybe we it's haven't set it to record it. Okay, yeah. yeah, to send that. Okay, cool. So you've got the activities and you've got the booking. So if we go back to the booking now, <coughs> so let's say that Mel phones up and she says, um, Oh, this provisional booking, um, I would like to now uh, confirm it. Actually, before we do that, what, what I'll do is I'd, I'd say that if you just go back into the booking uh, screen to do a new booking, what you should see now, so just, yeah, booking, new booking. You'll see now that this one's kind of in green, which is kind of a provisional booking. And when we confirm it, it will change to a different color. Um, Can you remove the provisional status? Yeah, so we're just going to update. So if we go now to Mel Andrew, if you go to more, here you're able to update the status, record the payment, or cancel and delete it. Uh, so if you update the status, you could then move this to being confirmed. So booked. So the next status might be booked. And let's say you want to send an updated email, they get an email which says, okay, now it's booked. Um, and then if you want to record the payment at this point, you can do. But let's leave the payment for the time being and we'll come back to that. So it's not an automatic email, so you can decide whether or not you want it. Yeah, yeah, so you can, yeah. So at each, each time you kind of decide. Because otherwise you could pepper somebody every time you're updating the statuses and things. Um, Etc. cool. Um, so if we, so you can see now that it's gone red and that's kind of now booked in. So you guys can visually indicate to the team, well, hang on a second, this one was provisional and therefore give them a call and say, actually, somebody with money now wants to actually buy the thing. Um, so if we go back, then you can uh, view the booking here. And you can see that you've got all the details for the booking. If, we, um, if you go to the booking day view, uh, and you put in the date, this doesn't default to today's date, so if you just put in today's date. This will now do a day view for all of your resources, for all of the bookings. So you can print off that sheet and give it to whoever needs to have it in order to make arrangements for the day. So you can see that that's gone through now into the day view. Could um, you have an email to somebody 
Uh, not at the moment. There's nothing that automatically emails it. So it's not a report, it's kind of a view of the data. But yeah, I don't know, we'll come back to that. Mm. Um, so, so that's fine, so we've updated that. So I think at this point, I'm not sure if we can still, uh, so if we go back to the booking on the contact record. Oh, if you go to the associated contact, just to show you that as well, um, second contact, right, yeah, you can see. You'll see under the bookings tab for them, it's separate, it's kind of under associated contact bookings, a bit like how you'd have the, um, the soft credits for contributions. Um, and obviously you don't have the same kind of changes and admin from the screen, because you've got to go to the main contact. So if you go to the main booking contact, so there's a link at the bottom left. Uh, left, left, left. And then if we go on to bookings, cool. So we can also cancel the booking if they want to. So let's say they've confirmed it at this point and they decide to put a cancellation in. So you can go to more and then you can cancel the booking. So here, like I said, we have like a, a wizard screen um, with the cancellation percentage. So you can select a cancellation percentage here. So you might have one day, one to five days prior and it will do kind of your calculation. You can actually put the percentage charge in the label so you could say that one to five days is 80%, whatever it is, so that you can see what that's supposed to be. So it's kind of a manual thing, um, but you also got the additional charges if you want to. And then a charge comment. So the charge comment goes out on the email to people. So they might ask, hang on a second, why have you put that additional charge in? So you can kind of add that and say, okay, well, that's, this is the reason for it. Again, option to send the email. And you can choose to record a payment if you want to. So we might as well do that at this point. So if you do select contact, so who's the contact who's going to actually have the payment? Um, financial type, so that might be, uh, so you might have whatever financial type you want, donation, you probably set one up for bookings um, when it's actually been received. Um, uh, the paid by, cash, uh, transaction ID, anything else, and the status of the, pen of the payment. So you might put that in as completed at this stage. You might put it in as pending if you're expecting the payment to come later. Probably have to think a little bit more about how you do that. Yeah, so what the flow would be, yeah. Does that go, is that sort of word for word in terms of so if you say who put that in? So so which member of staff or whoever recorded the cancellation? Did you go back to see if it was used or not? Uh, I'm not sure if we audit that and save who it was who makes it. Uh, I'd have to have a look at the activity. I'm not 100% certain. Um, but it's not a separate activity, it's just it updates activities for return, is that right? Um, when you cancel it. Mm. Um, I think the, can the activities, it creates a new activity each time. So the booking has the current status, but I think each time that you do anything, it's a little bit without um, the there wasn't hooks in Civi to be able to kind of overwrite the activity so that they're directly linked. So yeah, it's that, more kind that, of, that yeah. Like the best way to do it, actually. Yeah, so I think it covers. So if you just go to the activity tab, from memory, I think it will show each step on the booking, possibly, he says. Or oh, possibly not. I'll come back to you about that in a little bit. So no, so, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And just to show you, yeah, the cancellation percentages. So if you go into the administration, uh, is it cancellation? Yeah, cancellation charges. So here you can just edit these, and you can see the value is the percentage. So you just type in a, a percentage for the value there. And that's that. Cool. Uh, is there anything else? Ah, so, and you're able to go back into the wizard for a particular booking and edit it at any point. So if you go no, back into, so find booking. Booking. Cool. So here you're able to search for bookings based on their kind of status, etc. Um, or the person who made the bookings. Bring it back and then able to view this one. So we have kind of a workflow uh, that once it's complete and paid for, that kind of locks the booking down and that's the end of it. Is there any questions on that? 
in this case, is not big. What I'm looking for um, users of the system to request for a group uh, rather than do the whole thing. Uh, okay. Is there um, something like a uh, city web form or profiles that you can use? To it's, it's not into it. So at the moment, we, we're kind of dealing with, or the version one was kind of just for administration side. So it's kind of internal to the organization. So phase two is looking at online booking and how best to integrate that. So the idea would be that we integrate into contribution pages so that people can select some slots from the contribution page. Um, so those slots, so you'd make slots available within uh, the interface. Uh, those would then come up to the contribution page and people can go through the contribution page in order to purchase particular slots or times that you've made available online at particular pricing. Cool. What is the resource criteria and how do you have that? It's a resource criteria. Sorry, go back. It's, it's, only, it's only options in administration. Uh, booking? Sorry, go to... Uh, administer? Yeah. I, don't, I can't figure out what they, what they do or how they key into enforce. Is it to do with options or off the group? Uh, I'll have to have a look and check. Off the top of my head, there are, like I said, there's some metadata around the resources that we didn't manage to get onto kind of the other screens. So it might have been that um, for the filtering options of the rooms, there was going, we were looking to do kind of like a filter on the front screen for the rooms. Because if you get up to, say, 50 or 60 resources, that, that's going to get quite large. So the idea was to have some, you know, kind of tags and things that you could kind of filter them down with, but we didn't quite manage to get too much okay. work on that screen. I know you send this sort of email bit, um, it's sort of manual you get to send it. Is, is there any plans around having support for any reminder emails, you know, before the event or, or SMS? That, that's something that has come out with a discussion with a, a client recently, actually, where they were saying, yeah, this is something that we're going to need. So reminders that could be sent out to um, our staff to remind them of kind of long leases that might get renewed. So they were looking at it from a, a leasing of uh, sort of uh, spaces or art spaces. Um, and they were saying, well, people book out a lease for three months. So we want to book it out for three months. And then we want kind of a reminder to come to us. Um, so I think um, previously, um, the uh, in 4.4, the scheduled reminders would only send to the subjects of the reminder uh, of the activity, so the targets or people who are attached to it. You couldn't send them off to someone else in the uh, someone else in the organisation unless they were kind of I attached was to it. Thinking about the booker rather than okay, so, you know, so yeah. You've, you've got the yeah, it w it wouldn't be a big it wouldn't be a big feature to 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 kind of add in. I think. Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the client, the initial client was the GMCVO. Okay. So uh, I think that GMCVO, they've got both the databases team, which kind of help clients to implement CIVI, but they also are users of CIVI. Um, so they've got kind of an organizational level. So they are a, uh, a basically, in effect, a conference center. And they, you know, they were kind of the driver behind kind of the, the start of this project. Um, so they, you know, they look at it from a, uh, a, a resource booking, sorry, like a conference, so physical rooms, teas, coffees afterwards. So that was kind of the, the main one. But we tried to put as much flexibility into that as, as we kind of could in terms of the pricing for people. Um, so their, their kind of use case was that people kind of phone us up rather than, um, you know, kind of book online at that point. But there are conversations, like I said, with some people. I know that there's some people over in Canada using it, some people over in France using it as well. So it's kind of been global. I think it's been translated as well into a couple of languages. So, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. I guess we're, we're kind of running out of time. So uh, if that's everything, then we'll kind of wrap up there. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.